Hey guys, um, this is my second video, and today, today, tonight, because I only have a few more hours before I get on a plane, I'm gonna go over some of the pre-planning I did. This is to include um, books, tour books, and maps, and how I go about this. First of all, what I will say to everybody, um, there's so much information you could find through the internet, through YouTube, through books, through friends that have gone to some of the places you want to go. If you're going to get a book or a map in any way, it's great to do some preliminary research from it, from friends, uh, prior books and maps. But the one thing I will say is, before you go on your trip, make sure that the books and maps that you get are the most current, the most current edition, especially with Europe. Anybody will tell you that things dynamically change over there. Um, the money system, the communication systems, the transportation systems, the laws. So when you see a version of a book and then, oh man, you know, 2022, do I really need to get the 2023? There's a reason there's a 2023 version. Uh, I would say Rick Steves and his uh, corporation or business company, however, uh, they do a really good job on having their pulse, finger on the pulse, getting all the greatest and latest information. Now, one thing I did learn from my motorcycle travels is I like books. So look at this nice stack of books I got. Look at all these books. And these are not all of them. All of these I pretty much bought um, for the trip, during this trip. Not to take on the trip, but to do some research. I'm going to show you one right now that I'm not going to talk into detail. Because I'm going to talk about the Eurorail and the pros and cons about that in a separate video. But one book I got, which I'd recommend if you're planning the URL, is uh, Europe by URL 2023. Now, this isn't like a novel that you read through it, and it goes over a lot of different areas that I won't even be visiting. But there is some really good information here about timetables and how the URL system works. It's a great reference book. Um, it's not something you want to take with you, but it's definitely something that if, you're, if you have about a month before a trip or two months, I recommend buying this off of Amazon and then referring to it, maybe take some notes out of it, but don't carry this with you. I don't think that it would do you that much justice. There's enough Eurorail stuff online through their website that you'll be fine. Now, the other thing I'm gonna point out is I got these two books, which were great. One thing, actually the best thing I liked about these books, that in the back of these lonely planets, there were these tear out maps. And although this was for the whole country of Germany, the map that I tore out that I needed was Berlin. And the thing about taking a tour book that's encompassing a whole country, there's a lot of information. And there's a lot of redundant information regardless of what country. And what I mean by that, it'll say like they'll have a packing list and you know talk about the Euro. They'll talk about some of the generic things and no matter which book you have and it's repetitive. So you're not gonna wanna bring these with you. I would recommend, um, I did like the Lonely, Lonely Planet for the France one, there was a paper map in the back of Paris, which I really liked, but I read through them. We got some highlights of where we're going to go, but these are not going with me either. Um, but what I am taking with me is one for Poland, because this one here is specifically the two, there's three places. Two of them that I'm going to is Krakow and Warsaw, and I tried to read through it, but this is such a detailed book on the sites I want to see and some other things about Poland. So this is a book with two cities that talks a little bit about all of Poland, where these type of books talk about the whole country and just a little bit about the cities you may want to go. So this one will be going with me. The other thing that I did do, and I saw this on a Rick Steves video, um, good and bad, is that I got one book that was all of Morocco, but I wanted to take out the parts with Tangier and Casablanca. And I got these little binders off of Rick Steves for like 99 cents or $1.99. And what I did is I actually tore the pages out that I needed and I put them in these little binders that are up in my room. And then you put this spine on and you have like a little mini tour book made out of it. So it's, it's just this thick, this thick and not this thick. Um, I did that for Morocco and there was another country. I can't remember off the top of my head, but Morocco and another one. So I did it for two. Now, in that process of tearing out the pages I needed, the books were destroyed. But even if I didn't tear those pages out, once this trip is over, these books will be outdated in two or three years anyways. So 
watch other videos where people tear out pages and they just take what they need. And a lot of times after they get done with that, they'll just dump it. Now, one thing that I had done is that uh, people know me, I'm really into maps. With that, I'm going to make a recommendation that you join the AAA Automobile Club in your local state or area. It has a lot of benefits. You can get your international driver's permit uh, through the AAA for a couple of bucks. You can get free maps. Join the trip if you haven't. Join AAA before you go on these long trips. But I am a map hound. So <laughs> some of these maps, these stack of maps, not all of them are going with me, but um, a lot of them are. This is Cinque Terre. We'll be going there. I got one for Cinque Terre, Amsterdam, uh, Warsaw, Krakow, um, Munich, so forth. So I got a stack of maps that I will be bringing with me. Now the thing about what I do is that I look at these tour books and I find out the places that I want to go in the tour book, tour book and I read about them and then I map them out. Now today, yes, your electronic devices, you can use GPSs and all kinds of stuff, but I really, I learned this on my motorcycle trip, my style, my style of traveling, is that I disconnect from the moment to moment electronics, not the day to day, I will use my cell phones to check in, I'll use my GPS device to send and receive messages, but I like the old fashioned way. Maybe it was from my army scout days where we were so dependent on using maps and understanding maps and um, building a relationship with the map, trusting the maps. I like that a lot better. I don't have to worry about my battery life, don't have to worry about if I'm on Wi-Fi or pulling in a cell signal. I like maps. So I extract the information from the tour books, I write the notes and then plot the places on the maps and go from there. And if it's AAA maps, they're free and if I leave that country, I'll either pass it off to another, uh, I'll pass it off to another traveler or I'll leave it in my room for somebody else to get use out of it. Now, I'm not gonna talk in depth about this next book, but I highly recommend it. I am going to Normandy, I got some Normandy maps, but a friend of mine recommended this book and I hope I'm back enough from the camera where you can see it. This is an excellent book on the German perspective of the guys that were defending the Atlantic Wall, the German soldiers, and it's their perspective on the Allied invasion. When I get to Normandy, I'll talk more about this book, but these are one of those books that's not a tour book. And if you're going to some of these historic places, especially World War II, I would recommend getting a book, whether it be about the Holocaust, the uh, concentration camps, or some of the World War II sites, Read some of the first-hand accounts about a month or two in advance. It'll change the dynamic and it'll probably change your planning process on where and when you want to go see certain sites. I know it did for me. I'm going to have a different perspective when I go to Normandy because of this book. Um, another book that I am bringing with me because I'm really into going. I've never been to Germany. If you can believe that after 32 years of military service, <laughs> I've never been to Germany. I am bringing this one, which is the Cold War Sites in uh, East Germany, what which, which, which once was East Germany, the Cold War sites, this is going, because this is very detailed and it's thin enough. I'm also bringing this D-Day handbook. One thing I'll also mention is that when you get to some of these places, if you left the United States and did not bring one book or one map, and you were depending solely on electronic devices, that's fine. I believe that you are probably more versed in that aspect than I would be. Because when you get there, there's gonna be plenty of books. There'll be plenty of maps. There'll be plenty of flyers and pamphlets and handouts of those things. I just like to front load as much information as possible. So it's in my head and I do like carrying maps. So if you're thinking about, man, do I need books? If you're on the fence, maybe a few. Uh, I would recommend a map or two, you know, especially if you're on the trains, you can kind of track where you're going. But you can get away with it. You can get by with it by not bringing any of this and just getting to the site. Now you're gonna be learning and probably experiencing it at uh, moment one, where I will have some expectations, some knowledge going into it. Um, one other book that I did read is a generalized book, uh, Rick Steves. By the way, I'm not monetized. I don't wanna be monetized. I don't have any sponsors or endorsements. So this is all legit, real world. This is how I feel about some of these things. Rick Steves does a great job. I got this book, I'm not taking it with me. This is probably a book, since it's not about any place specifically, this is probably a book you can hold on to, pass it off to a friend. This will probably be maybe three, four years uh, shelf life, maybe five years. Whereas these specific ones, yes, you want the latest and greatest. Um, I think that's just about all I have 
Oh, I was going to mention one other thing. I did say I've never been to Germany. The one thing that had always fascinated me, I joined the Army uh, from 1987 to 1996, and then I transferred to the Air Force. So I spent the bulk of the Cold War, my career, correlated with the Cold War, my Army days. Never been to Germany. But I'm very fascinated on how East and West Germany was separated, about where that border is between East and West Germany, and also East and West Berlin, because we're going to be spending some time in Berlin. So what I did do is find a really cool Cold War era, era map um, of Berlin. It's a handout and it shows you all the different checkpoints, how you go in and out of East and West Berlin. And then I found this National Geographic map on Germany. And this shows you the dividing line of East and West Germany. So I can see as I'm traveling, because I'm going to be going to and from through Germany quite a few times. I'm going to be traversing the country maybe three times for different reasons. I'll get into that when I specifically talk about my trip to Germany. But like I said, and friends that know me know I love maps. These were really eye-opening. Once again, I know for a fact that once you get to Berlin, there will be maps to show you where the Berlin Wall once stood. It's just cool having the real world live rendition of what was once published, both Berlin and the country of Germany. So that's about it uh, for the maps. If you have any specific questions about maps, where to get them, what kind to get, you know, should you get the uh, should you get the small street um, streetwise ones that are that are plastic and you can use a um, a dry erase, you know, and mark it or paper ones. I get one I can. I, I keep them, and they don't expire as much as the guidebooks do. But here's all my maps, <laughs> and I'm probably bringing a bulk of these. I got one map of uh, Normandy, of today's Normandy, and there's another map I have that talks about uh, Normandy. And this map, I'll get into detail when I'm there. This actually shows you the invasion um, process and how the invasion was uh, plotted, the Allied invasion. So that's it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, there's a lot to go into planning the three-month um, trip into Europe. So the next one I'm going to do will probably be on communication how you can send and receive signals digitally through um, Wi-Fi, through cell towers, through satellite communications. I'm doing all three. I'll be using cell phone communication or cell towers. I'll be using internet communication and I'll also be using some uh, satellite communications. I won't be using the hardcore landline. I probably won't be picking up a phone, you know, and calling, you know, back home. But anyways, and I hope you're enjoying these videos. Once again, I can only talk and teach as much as I know. But if you guys get involved and ask me questions, I can take it one, two, three steps farther in making these videos all the more powerful. Thanks again for tuning in. Uh, remember, hit that bell button if you wanna get the updates. I'll probably be doing one or two videos a day for the first couple of weeks to catch up on some things and then I'll probably be punching one out once a day. Have a great day. I'm on a plane in a few hours. So the next time, my next video, I'll probably be in Oregon picking up my daughter, getting ready for our next leg of the trip from Portland, Oregon into Rome, Italy. Have a good evening, everybody. Take care.